Welcome to Swell Session, Episode 17, presented by The Well Studio. I'm your host, Jen Sprinkle. This is our 12th and final podcast of a special series for our Prayers for the Dreamer book club. Today's candid conversation is with Kristen McCall. Kristen wrote the prayer on social media from a place of truly understanding what it means to wrestle between posting honestly and authentically and maybe posting too much. So what questions should we be asking ourselves as we post online? And how can we glorify the Lord through social media? Hi, Kristen. Hi. Welcome to our podcast today. We are talking with Kristen about her prayer on social media. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm so excited to be here. I know. We're so excited. This is obviously a hot topic for us dreamers, doers, and entrepreneurs. So I'm I'm excited to chat about it. But tell our listeners a little bit about you and where you're from and a little bit about your story. Yeah, cool. Okay, so my name is Kristen Steele McCall, and I'm a newlywed, so I still don't remember my full name either. (laughs) Um, But I'm a mommy to a sweet little toddler, and I'm also pregnant with a little girl on the way, which is exciting. I know, ruffles. I can't even stand it. Um, I'm also married to an amazing man, Justin. We live in Nashville, um, and I love Nashville. I'm a native Nashvilleian, which is very rare these days. Um, but I have a passion for marriages that honor the Lord, um, which comes from a really hard season of my life of being married and then divorced. And now I'm in a God-honoring marriage, which is just such a fun, redemptive God story, which we don't have time for. We will um, make a point to record that podcast because that would be Yeah, awesome it'll be story. fun one day. Yeah. Uh, but I eat, sleep, and breathe social media, online marketing, blogging, um, both personally through my own blog. I blog at graciouslyauthentic.com. And then professionally, I manage uh, Selma Wilson's blog and podcast. She, if you don't know who she is, she's a Christian wo- Christian woman, executive leader at Lifeway, um, where I work. And I'm also an entrepreneur, a big dreamer. So needless to say, I wear a lot of hats. I love shoes and guacamole. Those are essential. And Target. <laughs> uh, so that's kind of a little bit about me. I think that would be a good t-shirt. Right? <laughs> like shoes, guacamole, Target. <laughs> and Target. That would be awesome. Well, tell us a little bit about uh, what inspired this prayer on social media. I'm sure people kind of got to pay- this page in the book and were like, uh, this is where there's a prayer on social media. And then they read through it and they're like, okay, I get it. There's a prayer on social media. Yeah, um, I think it was really hilarious. I think God has such a sense of humor um, because, Jen, you asked me to do this uh, social media chapter after I had done, like, the biggest uh, fast from social media and kind of, like, re-evaluation of my own social media, which I just thought was hilarious Um, because I had taken more than a month off from, like, posting anything um, and really kind of took that time to really reevaluate my own heart and all of my motives behind social media Um, because I was a freshman when uh, Facebook came out, so I'm almost 30, and, like, I have my adult entire life has kind of been online, so, you know, we did Facebook, and then I was in PR in college, so, you know, we learned about Twitter, like, right after it started, and so this whole online blogging, online world um, has kind of consumed my personal and professional life for the last almost 10 years. Um, so I really, this past fall, had taken a lot of time um, to really think about why do I feel like compelled to post what I post? What are my motives? Um, is it because I want others to be jealous of me? Like, I really had to like examine my own heart behind like what I posted how much I posted, blah, 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 like all of the things that you think about when you do social media. Um, and then from like a privacy and boundaries standpoint, I've really been rethinking like how much of my life do I really want to share online? Like you can literally sit there and share like every moment of your day and then people think you're crazy. Um, but there are some important moments that I don't want all of my followers or like 
friends or family to know about. Like, I really want those to be kept between me and the Lord and, like, the people who are involved in those moments. Um, So, like, this all kind of started as I was dating again last year. Like, all of last year, that was, like, a really private and, like, super special thing for us. Um, So we, I kind of really reevaluated, like, how much do I really want to share? Like, does everyone need to know that I'm going on a date? Like, that seems really weird. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, I'm a single mom, like, going on dates, like, that doesn't really seem relevant or that anyone cares. So that kind of, like, our relationship kind of started my thought process behind, like, what do I post? How much do I post? Um, So those are kind of, like, the Lord really just kind of re-evaluated and re-examined my whole thoughts on social media and blogging. Um, and then I went to the influence conference in the fall, um, kind of in the middle of all of these questions. And really, God put in my heart at that point um, just how much social media can be used for good um, and how it can be you know, you're sharing your faith and you're sharing stories of redemption and God's faithfulness. Um, And you can be a light to people who you don't even know, like halfway across the world. Um, So kind of you add all of those thought processes together and that that, that is like my heart um, behind where my prayer and came from. Yeah, because I love the in chapter in the third um, paragraph in your prayer I guess it's the fourth paragraph after the scripture. It says, Give me clarity to hold up each social network and examine if it is an idol. Give me the boldness to ask, Is this life giving to me? Does this bring God glory? Do I use it to share his love with others? And it makes me think of the scripture that says, Take every thought captive. Mm. And, and he does want us to sift and filter all these things through and with how powerful social media is, I feel like our our posts and, and what we write and what we share um, can be a catalyst for good or negativity or, mm-hmm. um, or criticism or um, I'm trying to think, Absolutely. you know, yeah. the, uh, uh, you know, causing others to or not being authentic, not being real, you know, putting yes, out. And, yes. and that's a conversation we've had before and, and conversations that a lot of people are having right now. And it's good, I think, to have these conversations. I know Kelly and I, and it's kind, it kind of makes me think through what you were going through when you were talking about last year and, and the story of your life and dating and, and this new relationship. And, you know, I think about had this been a few years ago, you – you probably would have freely posted a bunch of stuff about, oh, my first yeah. date or this and that. And and you you have grown wiser and you have processed that. And, you know, Kelly and I have been talking about how a lot of times you hear people's stories of struggle or trial, but it's after the fact, you know. Oh, and absolutely. It's always after they've healed or come on the other side of it or, or worked through such and such issue. But you rarely hear people just in the thick of it, but yeah. then there's that fine balance, you know? I know. I think about that a lot because on my blog, I talked a lot about kind of in the middle of the divorce muck and all of that, but I was still kind of like, there was part of me that was like angry that people didn't post stuff and like, why aren't people talking about this and blah, 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 blah. And the more I thought about it, the more I'm like, you know what? Because it's not wise. Like, it's not – I think there is a certain amount of emotional health um, that you need to you, – like, you need to get to a certain place with the Lord that you trust His faithfulness before you go off, like, freaking out. You know? Like, I think there's – because you can't take your words back online. Yeah. Um, Yeah. And that's, like, a really big thing that I've thought through, not just on, you know, social media, like, not on Facebook and Instagram and stuff, but more, like, your longer form, like, blog writing. Mm -hmm. Um, I've really thought through, like, who do I talk about? Like, for instance, this is totally personal to me, but, like, I don't mention specific people on my blog. Like, I will never speak negatively about anyone in my life. Like, 
Um, and that that's a very fine line because like you have no idea who reads your blog. Like I went to a family wedding. Okay, granted, I've taken six months off of my blog, so I haven't blogged in six months. And um, I went to one of my husband's cousin's weddings this past weekend. And like a super random aunt that I've never met in Florida walked up to me and was like, oh, I read your blog. And like, y'all, I do not have a big time blog. Like I have a really small, like my friends and family read my blog and that's it. Um, and I literally was like, um, that's like the most intimidating thing anyone can say to you. Cause then it feels super one sided. Like exactly. Hey, I know like your deepest darkest secrets and you have no idea who I am so then like when you think about it through that lens and that perspective like you want to be really wise and God honoring about like the words that you write on your blog um so I think it's been a really interesting process to kind of think through that and not everyone does that like how many blogs have we read that like bash people or um what I mean, whatever the case may be. And like, everyone has a right to do that. Like there's nothing like necessarily wrong about doing that. But like, if we're thinking about being a dreamer and a doer that loves the Lord and trusts in him and wants to be a light for him, like, I think the lens that we look at our social media and our blogs and what we post on Pinterest, whatever it is, like all of that takes on an entirely different look and feel if we think about it that way. Yeah, and I'd love to hear you kind of talk to those who, you know, can get caught up. I, I would love for you to talk more about the fast that you were on and what motivated that. And Because um, I'm sure, I know for me, I, I've done it, a lot of people have done it, and, and it's, it's motivated from a place of, hey, I'm getting, either my time is getting sucked up with, with social media yeah. or I'm getting my identity is starting to be um, getting a little hazy. I'm starting to get lost yes. in who I am because I'm comparing myself to everyone else's highlight reels. You know it's their highlight reels, but you've somehow gotten to a point where you've convinced yourself, no, this is really what their life is about. Yeah, it's it really, never is. <laughs> yeah, but I think we can get so desensitized. And right. scrolling, 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 it becomes this involuntary thought process that we just believe it's their real life. Right. Um, that's so good. So a lot of my motives are like exactly what you said about, um, I just found myself, first of all, wanting to connect with people really personally. Like, if I don't talk to my best friends, like, on a weekly, every other weekly basis. Like, I don't need to just know be from Instagram and, like, click the heart button, like, what they're going. Like, I need to check in with them. Like, I want to build community with those people. Um, and not just that, but I was getting really sucked in. Like, Pinterest is, like, such a vice. Like, Pinterest and Instagram, for me, are sort of, like, crack. Like, I regularly, like, just delete them from my phone because I'm like, I can't. Like, today is not a day where I need to be looking at people's pristinely white and perfectly organized and styled kitchens <laughs> that obviously don't have children. <laughs> like, like this is not the season where I need to look at home decor because right now this isn't the season where we have our own house. Like, I don't get to decorate. So right now, like spending time thinking about that is really futile and it's only gonna kind of result in me coveting other people or like being really discontent with my life and like if you had asked me five years ago if I was like sitting here talking to you having written this chapter like being a newlywed with a baby like I mean I would never like I would have been like there is no way that that could be my life. Like, I would be so thankful. And then, like, I sit here, and you can scroll through Pinterest or Instagram, and suddenly I'm, like, super discontent. And it's just, social media has, I feel like it's, like, it's sort of like the light and darkness. Like, it can be such a gift, 
And then it can be so life sucking as yeah. well. Like, yeah. And I think you really have to on a daily basis. Like yesterday, I was just feeling all the feelings. Like I'm a super emotional person. Like I have a lot of feelings. And when I have a lot of feelings, I just like sort of get on, on this rabbit hole that tornadoes into dark, dark nothingness. And I was just in that place yesterday and I was at the end of the day and I was like, okay, Lord, like what, um, kind of spawned this like feelings, like all the feelings. And I was thinking about it and I was like, I spent so much time yesterday morning, like on social media. I hadn't had my quiet time. I like literally just was like Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, like going through all of the social networks and didn't get filled up with the Lord before I started my day. And it just put me in a funk. Um, and I think you really have to, or at least I do have to day to day evaluate, like, is this life-giving? Is this still life-giving for me? Um, or do I need to take a step back? Like, do I need to delete Instagram today from my phone? Um, so, like, that was kind of the heart and the thought behind my social media fast. And, like, ha since having done that, I've become entirely more aware. I'm just more sensitive to how it affects me. Mm -hmm. Um and I think that kind of sensitivity, like I know a lot of people do social media free weekends, which I think is such a great thing. Um, I don't do it all the time, but I try to do like at least social media free Sundays. Um, and because I find myself, isn't it the most annoying thing when you're with a friend or in a group of people and like there's always that one person that like cannot put their phone down yes. and you're like, you're like, hey, um, we're all having like this really great dinner and our conversation is awesome. Like, do you want to join in or do you just want to take a picture of your plate and post it and tag us later? Because like, because that kind of stuff totally gets on my nerves where I'm like, okay, everybody, like, let's put our phones down. Sorry, you can hear my dog in the background. Um, like, let's put our phones down. Like, let's be in the moment. Let's be present. Because um, that, that is that feeling where I don't know how we were convinced. If we don't take, if we don't post it, it didn't happen. Right. Like but somewhere like, we believe yeah. that now. Which is entirely untrue. Like my husband and I, this is a fun story. We eloped and like literally I think 10 people knew before we did it. Um, and then... We didn't tell, like, we, I didn't post anything for, like, six weeks. I cannot even tell you how great that was. Like, I told people in person, like, no one gets to tell their news in person anymore. Exactly. Like, it was so much fun to be like, guess what? We got married. Like, people were like, what the crap? How did I not yes. know? And I'm like, because I didn't put it on Facebook. Like, so I just think there's something like the personal connection is lost when we just like go to town and like share everything. Um, well, so and I think, I think that that is what well, you said it earlier. It's social media is life giving and it's life sucking. And I think that that is the enemy's MO. He oh, picks, absolutely. He finds something that has two sides and he draws you in with the pretty side and he crushes you with the ugly side of it. And that's, he gets us on everything like that. Totally. And we have to, your, why the prayer is so important is you just give me the boldness to ask every day. Yeah. yeah. And you talking about, you became more sensitive. You became more aware. You took measures to take it off your phone, to take breaks. Yes, totally. Do you want to stop for a second? I'm gonna, yeah, we can. I'm going to take my dog out. Hold on. My husband's about to walk away. <coughs> no, I'm doing this. So he'll be like, hey, hold on.
Okay, sorry. Back at it. Um, okay, let's talk about this whole concept of fans and followers and this whole dynamic of, okay, we're, we're dreamers, we're doers. Most of us, you may be some of us listening are entrepreneurs. We're trying to promote something. We're trying to share our business with the world. So, yes, there is a place for getting more fans and followers. Um, but it can easily become consuming. Yeah, it can easily become like really prideful. Like, aren't I so cool and important that all these people want to follow us? Um, and I think that's the trap that we have to really guard against. Um, like, I think, I think a really good lens to think through kind of this whole, I hate the word like fans or followers. It's, it's like, I, I want to be like, they're all my friends. <laughs> These are my friends on Instagram. Um, but I think a really good thing to think through is like, if you're an entrepreneur or if you're trying to promote something, like what is the heart and the mission behind what you're doing? Um, and if it, And if it's something or a product or like a message that has, um, like if it's something that has value to people and, you know, you're sharing something really important, like you're going to have people that want to hear that. Um, so I think always tapping into your purpose and the why and who your ideal, like customer or reader or client or whatever you're doing like, you just always want to try to connect with people and, like, share the importance of what you're doing and, like, the heart of your message or the heart of your product. Um, and I think if you're doing stuff that is, you know, all, like, in God's will and for his glory, like, that shines through. Um, and we know, like, it's so easy to see people that are just trying to, like, make themselves great. Um, it's really easy to like see the fine line between that. Um, and it's really easy to recognize. So I think it's just constantly like a heart check. Like, um, why am I posting this? Like, what is the purpose of this? Like, what is the message? Um, and I think when we think of it from that heart, um, and being a light to the Lord and bringing him glory, like that's when your message will stay on target and your mission stays on target. Yeah, and I wrote a blog post a while back processing all this stuff that, you know, you talking about motives and things like that. And I really kept feeling that the Lord said, but it's up to me. Like it's up to me at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Mm -hmm. I've just called you to do these things. I've asked you to do them. The, the outcome is up to me. It's my choice how many people, you know, you impact or what happens with, with this effort that you're putting totally. forth. It's up to me. And I, it's helped me um, reflect on obedience is greater than outcome. And Absolutely. If we just focus on the obedience part and be diligent and and create excellent work, seriously, and, and work that's God honoring and and ministries that are God honoring and like you said, uh, posts with pure motives and writing, you know, that's life giving. The outcome is His. And then, Absolutely. I think we've got to as a and I'm talking to myself. We have got to as a subculture, if you want to call it, not value um, people with, like, not value people with all these, I, I say it, people with a K behind their number, <laughs> um, yeah. with, as more important or of, of, of more value yeah. than you are, totally. or being used more than God's using you. I think the yeah. enemy is just lying to us all. Totally. I'll never forget, um... I worked at B&H Publishing, um, and our president was talking to the whole company one time, and I will never forget what she said, because, you know, if you're in the publishing industry, like, any time in the last 10 years, like, you know how hard it is to sell physical books and how that's, like, declined, and so I thought it was so interesting that she said, um, 
She said, you know, like not all of our books are going to be New York Times bestsellers. Um, and some of them might not even like publish as much, like sell as much as we want them to. But maybe we were just supposed to write this book for one person. Like if one person reads this book and whatever it was, she was talking about kind of all of our books. If one person reads our book and, you know, falls in love with Jesus more or recommits their faith or, um, you know, on and on, like that will be worth it. Um, and I, and that's like a huge paraphrase. So if she reads it or listens, then I was paraphrasing, but that was like the heart behind what she said. And I really kind of was kind of shocked, right? Like you're supposed to be a New York, every book is supposed to be a New York times bestseller. And if that's like, if what we're doing is what you're saying, if we're just obedient to write what we're supposed to write and to post what we're supposed to post and, you know, as entrepreneurs produce what we're supposed to do and all of that stuff, then, um, we, then we will really honor the Lord. And I think that's, I think that kind of mission and motive is really important to remember always. Well, and just listening to you tell that story made me, it made me process how many times I post, and, and there's a place for this. I'm not saying never do this. But I, I, I question if I have a larger percentage of posts that are for a community that I want to have instead of the community that I do have. Oh, that's good. And am I nurturing and, and being life-giving to the community that has has already aligned with, with the mission that is true to my heart? Or right. am, I, am I only trying to focus on recruiting a new community, you know, or, right. or more people? So I think it's just that's, I think there's a place to say, to look at those around you, look at your community, look at the people who've aligned with your mission and your calling and, and you have your kindred spirits and, and you're walking through this journey together um, to focus on, hey, how can I encourage them that are already here? Yeah. And I think that kind of hints on, like, be who you are and don't mm -hmm. try to be somebody else. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because I know there's a ton, you know, you can go online and get courses on how to, like, build your Instagram following and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, you know what? Like, just like you were referring to earlier, like, the Lord, it's all the Lord's. And just like he owns the cattle on a thousand hills, like he could in one day make one of your posts go quote viral and you could have like 3 million with an M behind your name, Instagram followers. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean though? Like yeah. it's, it's not about the number. Um, I think, and we have to remember like if, <coughs> excuse me, if we don't have some like crazy massive following, <coughs> it might not be time and it might not ever be time. Like, right. and that's okay too. That doesn't mean that our worth isn't as valuable as somebody who does. Yeah. And I think it's such a good reminder. I think we have to be very careful not to focus more on building that than being obedient because yes. it can be easily a distractor. <coughs> Absolutely. It totally can. Well, I know that I think we probably should have another, another podcast someday just on um, the practicality of social media. So we might be following up with you on that. All right. Well, I would like that because I like you and I like Well Studio. <laughs> well, I'm so glad. Well, thank you, Kristen, for joining us today. And You're so I know awesome. that this is a, a topic that if we're all really honest, we want to wrestle with well. And, and just to say it again, to just be bold and ask, is what I'm writing and posting life-giving. And just thank you for being a part of this project and for writing these inspired words. Yeah, thanks so much. It was, it's been such a journey and such a fun process to be a part of the book and podcast. I just love everything that y'all are doing. So very excited. Thank you for listening to our Swell session. For more information about our devotional and The Well Studio, you can visit thewellstudio.co. Until next time, have a swell day.